Hi, I'm Slava Rakiki, and I'll be presenting today on the importance of light in safe childbirth. This is work that's joint with Brian Masigwa, Peter Weisla, and Jessica Cohen. In Sub-Saharan Africa, about a quarter of health facilities have no access to electricity, and even those that do have access experience frequent and prolonged interruptions. Without reliable sources of energy, providers are often dependent on things like kerosene lamps, candles, and mobile phone flashlights. Uh, lack of reliable light may affect uh, quality of care in several different ways. It can challenge providers' ability to provide care and manage complications. It can uh, delay the necessary care actions that providers need to, to, to do. And it can increase provider stress and as a result, medical errors. The significance of access to affordable, reliable, and modern clean energy in strengthening health systems has been recognized by the United Nations Sustainable Energy for All Initiative. Uh, but there's actually very little evidence on the link between energy and health that is really important to um, catalyze cross-sector investments in energy and health. Uh, and so the um, objective of the study is to evaluate the impact of the installation of a solar light intervention on maternal health care quality in Uganda and also to estimate the causal effect of reliable light on quality of care. The, this, the study is designed as a step wedge cluster randomized trial in Uganda in 30 low level facilities that have unreliable light. So these are not hospitals, but um, smaller, low, lower level facilities. The intervention is the We Care Solar Suitcase, which is um, a, a uh, intervention that's designed by We Care Solar an NGO. It is a solar panel that's installed on the roof of a facility with a 12 volt battery, uh, and it includes LED lights for all of the maternity rooms, um, as shown in, in that picture on the right. Uh, it also includes two rechargeable headlamps and a fetal Doppler. Uh, for data collection, we conducted direct clinical observations of care during labor and delivery uh, of all the essential care actions that, that should happen during uh, labor and delivery and uh, up to one hour postpartum. And this, uh, we had a checklist um, with timestamps on all of these actions so we could look at delays in care. We also installed light sensors uh, to be able to objectively measure the quality of the light in, in the rooms. So we found that deployment of the intervention eliminated use of kerosene lamps and flashlights. Uh, in this figure, uh, it shows that in um, the, the periods before the intervention was deployed, more than 40% of observations used the kerosene lamp or flashlight as the main source of light, um, whereas uh, after the intervention was deployed, 0% used uh, those, those types of light. So in, uh, the intervention increased the proportion of observations with adequate light from less than 60 to uh, 100%. Uh, and added an extra 141 minutes of light per day. Uh, we also found that the intervention increased quality of care and decreased delays. So in our IV results, uh, we found that uh, adequate light uh, increased quality of care by seven percentage points from an average of um, just under 39% uh, and decreased delay by 25 minutes uh, from an average of 88 um, minutes at baseline. Overall, the results indicate that provision of light and electricity significantly improved quality of care and reduced delays. Uh, in particular, the result on delays is interesting um, as delays uh, can result in undiagnosed and untreated complications that can impact on health. Um, however, even with bright light, quality of care was poor. Less than 50% of the essential care actions were performed even with adequate light. Uh, and that underscores the recommendations from Global Health Quality Improvement Committees that efforts to improve quality must really include transformative systemic changes to the health system, um, but that uh, light is an integral part of, of that. Thanks very much.